control panel to allow... Thank you for joining us for our webinar this morning. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name's Bevan Anderson. I am the CEO of AppSoft Australia, the people that produce AppPlan EFB. Um, I'm also the company founder. I started this thing back in 2010, which you know seemed like a good idea at the time to create a an iPad app that replaced the kneeboard that I used to take flying. I've personally been flying for 28 years. Um, I've got a commercial license, instrument rated, and worked in IT. And yes, so I had a bit of a bit of everything to get this thing started. So. Avplan EFB was, as I said, a designed to be a replacement for the kneeboard that I used to take flying. So on that kneeboard, you know, I'd have the uh, flight plan clipped on one side and my maps and charts and approach plates and so on clipped to the other. And strangely enough, that's how Avplan EFB works. So we've got our our flight plan here on the left with you know a series of waypoints we go from Raven to to Wagga for example um, it uh, ha has usual things that a uh, flight plan will have like altitudes and lower safe altitudes tracks and headings the headings take into account magnetic variation and winds and so on the TAS and ground speed winds aloft and temperatures distance and distance to your destination and then the uh, time interval. Now those time intervals take into account aircraft performance, winds aloft and climb and cruise and so on. So just like a nav log that you were taught to do when you, when you learn to fly, this is how it does all its calculations. And then when you're actually flying along, it uses GPS altitude to uh, uh, GPS speed and so on to show you a what you're actually achieving. So Avplan EFB becomes this decision-making tool in the cockpit and you're not just blindly following a GPS. So you have uh, your flight plan, which is you know your intentions that you set before you took off um, and you know how much fuel you're going to need and how much time it's going to take. And then, you know, using this thing in flight will show you then, you know, what you're actually achieving. So you can see if there's a variation and do you need to then make decisions like do I need to divert, and go and get fuel elsewhere or so on and so on. So the flight plan shows you things like, you know, nav aids and frequencies. These coloured dots are the weather from METAR reporting stations and the places you're going to fly past. And you can see those coloured dots also on the map. They're showing you weather based on, uh, and the colour being green means VFR, blue means it's VFR, but the cloud base is less than 2,500 feet. Yellow means a cloud base is less than 1,000 feet, so there we go at Bendigo, and then red means a cloud's less than 500 feet. Scroll to the bottom of our flight plan and it shows you, you know, some summary information like the time it's going to take, how much fuel, the distance and cost and so on like that if you if you want to know such things. Down the bottom of our flight plan there's a bunch of different buttons. The first one pops the plan into edit mode so we can quickly rearrange the flight plan. When we're in edit mode we also get these buttons appear right down the bottom so we can clear things in the plan for reuse, like the time intervals, the track log, the little green line the plane leaves behind you, any fixes and passenger manifest, and then make big changes to the flight plan, such as reverse the plan back to the origin, invert it, like turn it upside down, and append another plan to the bottom. There's a button in here the curly arrow forces the app to go and refresh all the weather. So as you build your flight plan and use the app, AppPlan EFB automatically downloads and saves all the weather for your flight. Um, it includes all the METARs, all the TAS, all the NOTAMs, the winds aloft, the, the um, NOTAMs. Did I say NOTAMs? 
uh, and they're all saved on your device for offline use. So you can just, I could turn this device off offline. Now take it off the network and everything will still be there. So you don't have to go and ask for things. It will automatically download it. And as you fly along uh, in almost real time, things like metas will update and new tasks and new notams and so on. So as long as you've got some form of internet connectivity, all of those things will update for you in, in almost real time. The little aircraft button under the flight plan allows us to choose which uh, aircraft model you're going to use and so on. The little flag toggles wings on and off. So to see what the, the effect is for no wings or with wings. And then the last button under the, the flight plan allows us to do things like email a flight plan to other people, airdrop it, so wirelessly to other people, send it to another app on the iPad. You can send your flight plan into a flight deck on the iPad if you want to use Jefferson charts. And you can do the tweet and Facebook thing and also force a flight plan to sync to your other devices. So you can enable our cloud syncing function which will sync your aircraft details and flight plans to your other devices so that then you, know, you can pick up another device and use it where the other one left off. Uh, top of our flight plan, we've got the UTC date and time and then a button to add waypoints. There's multiple different ways of adding waypoints to your flight plan and so on. But we'll get to that. Now, now on the right-hand side, the app is divided into a series of seven panes. We have the planning pane, which has all the pre-flight planning activities. En route, which is the one you're looking at now, which has got the maps and charts. Terminal has all the airport information. That's where you'll find NOTAMs and TAFs and METARs and all the URSA and DAT pages for a particular location. Weather is where we got all these new weather things, like where you'll find the new graphical area forecasts and so on. Text is where all the documentation lives, such as the AIP and the URSA general pages and the Air Plan EFB documentation and so on. The notepad for writing notes and then where you go and change a whole bunch of settings. So we'll look at each one in turn. The planning tab basically has all the sort of pre-flight planning activities and it's arranged in a, in a logical order. So you pretty much can start at the top and work your way down to the bottom, you know, to filing a flight plan. So you can find the most optimum altitude to fly based on aircraft performance and winds, showing you the correct hemispherical level. We can load people and fuel into the aircraft. Now as I go along, if you've got any questions, feel free to type them in the question box and I'll do my best to answer. Or uh, I'll either answer straight away or, you know, if it's something that will fit in better later, I'll, I'll get to that when I get to it. So once we've got uh, load stuff, we've got, you know, your takeoff weight, landing weight, zero fuel weight. Here it is in a table here and then a fuel plan with climb, crews, alternates, variable, fixed reserves holding approach and so on. Tap planning to go back. We can see if there's any restricted areas that we're going to fly through and if they're active or deactive. So there's a couple but they're deactive. We can we will get notifications in real time about weather changes but there aren't any at the moment. We can create user waypoints, we can get a route briefing, for example. SPFIB briefings are, well, 
are pretty useful because they'll show you, you know, everything about now, but then we can tap update later and it'll just show us the things that have changed between our original briefing and now. And down the bottom of every briefing, you'll find all the, uh, the new gas and GWPT charts for uh, your flight. Tap planning to go back. We can file a flight plan and we can choose to print things before we go. We can print our flight plan, loading information, briefing information and weather and all the plates for the airports that we're going to fly over. Touch of a button and we can send it to an air print printer, we can send it to another app in the iPad. It just creates a single PDF document and we can archive that or do whatever we want to do. And then post-flight we can see what, what we did and what we need to log. Now under en route, that's where all the maps live. So we have all the VFR and IFR charts in Australia and this is actually a worldwide chart as you can as you can see, but here we are in Australia. Now we've got the flight plan overlaid from Moorabbin to Wagga. The flight plan itself has annotations on it such as, you know, top of climb and top of descent and so on. Critical point, which is a point that's equally distant in time from your departure and destination. Over, over these maps, we can selectively turn on and off a whole bunch of different things. So a couple of things I've got turned on at the moment are METARs. So under the weather, we can change that. So you can see green being VFR, blue being VFR, but not so good. And then yellow and red, gray ones. So if we have a METAR that doesn't have enough information, so it doesn't have any cloud information or visibility or so on, we'll display that as gray. So we don't know what the weather is so much. You can see we're overlaying airspace, so you know the stuff that's depicted on the chart, but you notice this is off a chart. Uh, similarly, if we go to places like Woomera, you know this is a whack chart, but we've overlaid airspace on top of that. We go and read and interpret NOTAM information, so here are active restricted areas. They're depicted in red. Here's airspace that's not active but it will become active in the future. So it's yellow. Sorry, I can't search by topic, but I can search by title, actors or directors, and categories like this. Thanks, Siri. I can go back to sleep now. So this is airspace that is going to be active in the future and it's yellow. If we want to find out information about airspace, we we double tap with our finger on the map. And it shows us all the airspace at the point where we tapped, where the arrow is. So we can look at what that NOTAM is for Edinburgh, it's for the CTR being active at certain times, and it'll be next active at this time. Those times are in local time. Tap airspace to go back. So we can see any other restricted areas and controlled areas and so on, area frequencies and QNH. Here's some more active restricted areas and so on. A couple of some other things we do is again reading NOTAMs. You might see these funny little yellow or red boundaries. They're military low jet routes. Again, if we want to find out about them, double tap with our finger and we can see what that NOTAM is. You can see the times that it'll be active and then what's going on. So in this case it's C-17s at low level. Not the sort of thing you want to fly into as you, as you tootle past in your Jabiru. I might end up having a very bad day. So there's all the airspace, there's some of the weather things. 
The weather options are turned on and off with a little radar button here in the top right. We can turn things on like the weather radar. Turn that on. It shows you the date and time of the uh, radar image and we need to go and find some weather. Where are you, weather? There's some down here. There we go, there's some weather. So it's a static image and then we can choose to animate it with these controls. Here we can press play and it will display it as a animation. Now as you fly along we update the radar in the background when you have internet access so that uh, when you don't have access it will show you the latest information. So it's not as if you, you might go and want to look at the weather radar and you just, at that particular instant you don't have internet access so we don't show anything, no that's, that doesn't occur, it just shows you the last stuff that, that we knew that we were able to download. And because we have the date and time down the bottom here, you will know how old that weather is. So we go back to radar, we can turn the radar off. We've got infrared satellite imagery, satellite, uh, surface pressure and freezing levels. So if any of, any of you fly IFR, that's particularly useful. So we get a forecast of freezing levels. So you can see, you know, how high they're going to be and the date and time. We can step this forward. So it's got a forecast that goes out a number of days so you can get an idea of what the what the freezing levels are going to be a few days out. Yes, a recording of this will be available at the uh, completion. You'll get it via email and it'll also be uploaded to YouTube. So surface pressures, significant weather. So this is where down here you turn on METARS. So that's those little coloured icons. I'll turn off three levels. Sigmets. Uh, you can turn on the Sigmet overlay. So there, here's Sigmet. And if we want to find out the text, we can tap on it with our finger. The other thing we'll display are air mets, and they'll be purple. There, that's an icing Sigmet because of blue. So for severe ice. So turbulent segments are yellow or orange, sorry. So here's another turbulence one or thunderstorm activity. The, uh, yeah, and any air mats. Now air mats are particularly important these days because that's how an area forecast or a gaff is amended. So if the weather changes. Um, so with new gaff, and I'll talk about that when we get to the weather stuff. Um, yeah, and if you want to see them overlaid on the map, make sure you've got Sigmets turned on. So that's the radar button and then Sigmets. The other useful thing to turn on is Global Lightning and that uh, looks like lightning. Here we go, the little lightning bolts. So that's any, any uh, lightning activity in the last 15 minutes. And it's updated every minute or so. Um, so. And anything older than 15 minutes just gets purged away so you don't see it. So it's basically any sort of current sort of convective activity you'll see as, as those little lightning bolts. Now, as I said, we've got a whole bunch of all the VFR and IFR charts in here. You can change the map by just tapping on the... the uh, the map button up here and selecting the particular chart. So we can look at the uh, Australia wide en route low chart, for example, and there it is. The maps themselves, you can rotate any which way with our finger. You can lock yourself in the center of the map with the little arrow button. And then the one next to that locks the map either north up, plan track up, heading up or free rotation. So with the uh, heading up mode, it will rotate 
depending on which way you're traveling. Now we have the Mega VFR chart is a combination of WAC charts, VTCs and VNCs and as you zoom in it picks the most appropriate chart for the area that you're looking at. So <laughs> zooming in on Moravan, it's now pulling up extended runway centre lines. These are from the end of the runway, they're five nautical miles long and the most interwind runway is in green and if it favours two runways you'll see that yeah, two runways are green. So they're five nautical miles long. If you keep zooming in, the airport diagram appears. So it's one of our pro features. But yes, so we've got this infinitely zoomable map that then pulls up the, the airport diagram. So for example, we'll go to Point Cook, and then yep, up pops the airport diagram. You can see that we've depicted an active restricted area around Point Cook and then there's a yellow region. That's again us reading NOTAMs for you and then graphically depicting temporary restricted areas. So that's not yet active but it will be later on today. Now there's a way of overlaying a whole bunch of other information by tapping the map settings button. We can look at our aircraft track. So that's a little green line that the aeroplane will leave behind you. We can turn on and off the HUD, which are the, the boxes at the top of the screen that show you information about your active lead. You can turn the course pointer on and off. So that's a little pointer that comes out the front of your aeroplane and it shows you where you're going to be in two, five, and ten minutes time. So it varies in length based on your ground speed. Uh, a train overlay, which sort of highlights uh, terrain that could be a factor based on your GPS altitude. Any traffic information? So um, that will show. Um, if you're connected to an ADSB receiver, it'll show traffic by ADSB. And if you turn on our Avplan Live feature, uh, it'll show you um, depictions of other aircraft. So here, here's an example of um, showing you tra traffic information. So you've got the call sign there, FUF. FUF's flying at 1,100 feet. Or 1,800 feet, sorry, and is doing 124 knots and they're on climb. The traffic has a, a symbol poking out the front of it, which is one minute long. So that shows you where they're going to be in the next minute if they keep that same course and speed. And if we want to find out where they've been, we can actually double tap with our finger and it'll show you a track log you can see there in light blue uh, where, we've, where they've been. So that's what traffic looks like and I'll show you how to enable Avplan Live when we get to settings. Distance rings, places rings around your aircraft that are 3, 5 and 20 five nautical miles. Rocket boxes put little markers on your route showing you the tracks and distances to fly to the next waypoint. A cursor which shows you uh, the sort of Latin long of the centre of the screen so you can then uh, cre accurately create user waypoints and all sorts of other useful things. And overlays is where you can turn it on, on and off the ability to display KML overlays which is a a Google um, shape format so that you can draw shapes on the map. And an example of that might be we've got one here for the Lilydale training area. And so that then it draws 
a boundary on the map of the training area. So you can do things like that. It's kind of useful for, for flying schools and other things. And lastly, under view items, a whole bunch of other stuff appears. We can look at the extended runway centre lines for our departure and arrival airports. We can turn on airport um, information, uh, the current glide capability of the aircraft can be depicted as this green blob that walks along, helicopter landing sites and ALAs. Fuel availability, so we can see if there's fuel at a particular place and then if um, and what the price is if we if we have the current fuel price information. Obstacles, so we'll highlight any charted obstacles that are around the, the map, man, uh, your flight plan on the map. Nav aids, waypoints, airspace and active airspace, so that's drawing the airspace boundaries on the map and then the active restricted areas, so, you know, I always have these ticked. IFR routes, low and high, pilot weather reports, so if uh, someone else has uh, depicted, uh, has has reported any weather, they can they can report that via the app and it can be displayed as an icon on everyone else's. Area frequency boundaries and area forecast boundaries. We can find waypoints and locations with a little uh, magnifying glass and we can fly direct to places with a direct to button. Okay, next we have terminal. So that's where the airport related information lives. And that's where we find, you know, so we're looking at Moorabbin at the moment, the latitude and longitude, the beginning and end of daylight times in UTC, height above sea level. And then we have information about the active leg, if it's a flight plan waypoint. We've got communications information, so ATIS, AUS, that kind of stuff, tower frequencies. We have weather at that particular place, so at Moravan. We have the raw TAFs and raw METARs with that coloured dot. We can see when it's issued and the time that it was, so that's five hours ago and this is 31 minutes ago. We should see this update as actually as I'm talking. These are updated every every half an hour so we, you should see that just in real time just go blimp and, and flick over. We also decode the TAFs and the METARs so this is the current period and we can see the wind is variable five knots visibility and cloud and then at this time the wind and whatever it's going to be that we can see the temperatures and QNHs again all decoded and then Scrolling down, we'll also show you nearby weather. So we can have a look at the TAS nearby. If we tap on that, we will actually go to the airport. So this is Avalon, for example. So if you tap on this cell, it will take us to Avalon. And on the METAR side, you know, we've got the, the raw METAR up here from Moravan, the time since it was issued, and then decoded. So the observation time in local time, the wind, visibility, temperatures and dew points, Q and H, any remarks, density, altitude, and again, nearby METARs, so Essendon, Coldstream, Melbourne, Avalon. We can look at any NOTAMs for that particular location. So any, any new to, no TAMs are depicted in yellow, so we can see anything that's been changed recently. And we can scroll down through this to look at all the particular no TAMs. Once we've read a particular no TAM, we can mark it as red and it just collapses down to a single line. So it, or if we have a NOTAM that we don't really care about, so you're a VFR pilot, you don't really care about departure or post procedures, we can mark it as red and it hides it away 
and we won't see it again. You can just see this one line, sorry. If we want to view it again, we can just tap on it with our finger and up it comes, but then we, you know, we can hide it away with the hide button. Now the state of all these things synchronizes across your devices in real time. So if I look at Mirabin, for example, on my backup device and go to no tams, I'll, uh, so I'll look at that one, but on this device and you'll see it collapse away. So it's pretty cool. So you read one on one device and on your, all your iPhones and iPads and Android tablets, the state of that will, will synchronize in real time. You're really clever tech. We have winds aloft information. So that's coming from the current GWPT forecast. So the grid point wind and temperature, which are now the way that we do winds aloft. So we've got all our altitudes in here, the temperatures and the deviation from ISA, and then the winds aloft at various different altitudes. You have the satellite image of the particular airport, fuel information, rain information, and the AOPA airfield directory if you subscribe to that component. Now, to find the IRSA and DAP pages, we then swipe this and we get the IRSA. Swipe again, we get the runway distance supplement and then we get the IFR charts and plates and stuff. You can see here, this is a georeference chart, so it's showing us our flight plan there. You keep scrolling and we'll see our flight plan on the instrument approach plates as well. Here we go. Now like the, how you saw the airport diagrams appear, on the map, these can be overlaid on the map as well. So you can tap the map squiggle button and show chart on map. And that will then overlay the approach plate on the chart. You can see here the uh, airports and stuff that I've turned on. So we can see you know, little highlights of the airports and the altitude they're at and so on, the CTFs. I'll just turn them off again. Right. Now, if you use a three-finger tap, you can get all the uh, all the plates appear at the bottom of the screen, and we can click quickly find the one that we want. So, three fingers on the screen, and we can quickly find it. Or we can tap the book button, and you'll see all the plates for a particular airport. We can set some as favourites so that we can go back to them. So we go, we've got a favourite as the Moravan MDB now. We have all the airports here at the other side, so we can we can either scroll through or we can search for a particular airport by SDW, for example. And then it brings up Tamworth. And then we have all the various charts, so we can quickly go to a particular plate. The terminal page is also linked with our flight plan, so we can quickly get to a particular bit of information by just tapping on the, the row in the flight plan. So if I tap on Aubrey, for example, in our flight plan, it opens Aubrey, and I can find the charts and so on. If I want Wagga, I can tap on Wagga, opens Wagga, and I can look at Met information, for example, TAFs and NOTAMs. You can see how the uh, the metas have now refreshed without us doing anything. The amount of data that's been transferred is, is quite small. It's, you know, in the order of kilobytes. So, yes, yeah, it's really neat, really neat stuff. So if you want Moravin, we can tap on Moravin. So that's primarily the, the way to get quick access to terminal information. Now, the last way of finding a particular airport is just by tapping on the map. So as we fly along, we want to find out about Shepparton. We can tap on the map near Shepparton 
tap on the airport symbol, and then it shows us information about Shepparton. The height of the airfield, that long, weather, TAF, NOTAMs. There's three NOTAMs we can tap on that to see. So there we go, there's a new one there and so on. And if we keep scrolling, we have communications information, so AWIS, CTAF, area frequency, NDB, and then scroll again, URSA, airport diagrams, and so on. If we want the URSA, we can tap on that. That will open the terminal page for that particular place. There we go, Shepherd. Lastly, we have a little start-stop timer, again for timing instrument approaches and other things. So tap on the button to stop it and then reset, so start, stop, reset. All these charts we can draw on with our finger or with our Apple Pencil. If we double tap, you'll notice that this editing bar comes up, so we can draw or we can add text, we can change the colour and so on, and then it's a matter of just drawing on the on the map. One useful way, one useful thing might be to visualise your circuit entry, so you get an idea of what you're going to do. You might want to draw, you know, where the, the wind's coming from, that kind of stuff. The other useful thing with the highlighter is to highlight your taxi clearance when you're at a controlled aerodrome, so you know especially if you're given a progressive taxi, you know, when you stop, when you reach the end of where you're drawn. So with the palette, we can change the thickness so we can actually, um, you know, make this a pen that we can then draw. On the map. Now this is also synchronizes across your devices so that all the stuff that we've drawn there will be visible on your other, other devices. So there you go, there's the annotation that I've just, uh, I've just placed on this one. So you can sort of see it all coming up as I draw. So yeah, any notes you make on one will be then pretty much available on all your other devices. So you can have one device, if something happens to it, you pick up your other device and it just keeps on going. And uh, I think that's about all the interesting stuff that the terminal page does. Now to weather. Weather is where sort of all the weather-related information lives. So we've got all these different weather options here. We can make it full screen and hide our flight plan with this little button there that looks like uh, all the vertical lines. So we go to full screen. So here we have map of Australia. We're looking at the graphical area forecasts. So we can see all the area forecast boundaries. You can see an air mat here, the little purple blob. We can tap on it with our finger and see what the air mat actually is. So isolated thunderstorms. You can see our flight plane in here little red lines and so on. If we want to view a GAF, we can just tap on the area with our finger and up comes the new graphical area forecast. And we can see the different time periods. So GAFs are issued every, two are issued every six hours. So one for zero to six and one from six to 12 hours. And we can look at each one just by tapping the buttons up the top and then close it once we've looked at it. And that's, that's nice, but let's, let's step it up a notch. But when we zoom in, suddenly you see that we've now decoded all that GAF into um, areas on the map. So now you'll see we've got area A, A1, a line there that for 37 South. So to view a particular area, we tap on it with our finger. So here we go. We're going to be flying in area A. So here's what the weather's going to be like. Scattered queue, blah, 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 in A1, south of 37 south. So we've actually depicted that for you. There it is, 37 south. And then some other weather here and then moderate 
thermals. If you want to find out about A1, we can tap on A1 with our finger. Bloop. Oh yeah, here we go, scattered Q, it's broken in A1, and we've highlighted which area that we've tapped on, A1. We can see the validity times up here, both in UTC and local time. And it looks like we'll be flying in area A in that area, we can tap on it there. And we can see, you know, there's the validity times and then the weather will expect broken stratus in A1. Oh, we're not flying in A1, so we don't need to worry about that. And above 10,000 feet, blah, 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 a few scatter queue. So, yes, it's going to be very lovely weather around Wagga. You can see over near Griffith, we've, uh, there's obviously a line uh, in the verbiage about the forecast. So, we, again, we can tap on that. And we can see what it is. Oh yeah, isolated fog southeast of or haze southeast of Hay and Forbes. Okay. Um, occasionally, you'll see areas that or place names in there, and they'll be depicted as well. So here's you'll notice that we've depicted a couple of place names. There must be in the forecast, so we'll tap on that to see what it says. So here we go, broken stratus, land south of that's what Shark Bay, and then there's isolated fog in land of Calberry. But we, we, we don't know where those places actually are, so here they are depicted on the map, on this little chart. Again, there's a bunch of time periods, so yeah, we can see what the active time period is. So look, at zero to six, it looks like we've got a line 146 east. So, and a few more areas, so we can then tap on the particular area to see. So it looks like we're isolated fog in A1. So yes. Um, the gaff really comes alive with our depiction here in Adplan EFB. I hope you like it. The guys have put a lot of effort into it. Really quite innovative. So yes, lots of weather, weather stuff. Now, next we have area briefings. So um, for all the area forecasts that the app automatically downloads, they can be found here. I've disabled it so we can't see them. Any NAIT charts can be viewed here. You can just tap on a particular chart to view it. Um, once you've accessed it, It'll save it on your device and so on. Satellite imagery is a view of Australia with a satellite image that updates every 10 minutes. We've got our flight plan here. So there we go. And you can see cloud and so on. You can see in local time the color of the time that that image was last updated. And you can animate it with the little play button. So you can see dawn breaking. It's that it's that high resolution. It's pretty neat. So you can kind of see how you can almost get to the individual cloud level. And these controls can also step forward and backwards. Now, additionally, apart from visible satellite, you've got a whole bunch of other options like grayscale, infrared plus lightning, um, color enhanced infrared and the visible color that you can see there. So lots of different options. So a great way to get an idea of what the weather's doing in. And this updates every, it's about a half an hour old and updates every 10 minutes. So this one updated at 3.20 local time and it's now 3.47 local time where I am. We have a Winds Aloft view, which pulls information from an external website. Again, here's our flight plan track. And information about Winds Aloft, you get an idea of speed and direction. And we can change the altitude depicted by tapping on the little wind thing and changing the altitude here. So we're currently looking at 5,000. Let's look at 10,000, for example.
we have a bunch of, you know, charts from the Bureau, you know, um, surface forecast and so on, significant weather charts for medium and high level. So these are particularly useful for those that fly sort of above 10,000 but, but below 20. They get an idea of what, what weather's doing. All the low-level GWPT charts are in here, sorted by time, so the most recent ones are up the top. So we'll look at Victoria and Tasmania, for example, and there's the, the grid point winds and temperature. Um, these are the, this is the data that we then pull into the flight plan based on your departure time and so on. So there's one, one of these are issued every three hours, so we have point forecast for that little grid. So in that little square, every three hours, um, going out, I think, two days. Tap close. So we've got surface pressures, wind, and then sort of upper level wind forecasts, a whole bunch of other stuff for different areas, so the US and New Zealand and so on and so on and so on. Now, that's pretty much weather. Text is, oh, actually, what I should say is the really neat thing about this is these pictures, you know, the old, the old text-based area forecasts were about 50 to 80 kilobytes in size. These are about 250 to 500 kilobytes per image. But... The data that we download to do this is in the order of 10 kilobytes per area. So we're actually downloading a lot less data and then depicting it in a way that actually makes it far more valuable. Uh, the reason I say that is that the, um, you know, when you're in the air and stuff, you know, you, you potentially don't have too much bandwidth. So the, the, the less, least amount of data that you need to transfer, the better. And the other thing that we do is once you put a flight plan in the system, our system, we then monitor that and then if, if weather changes, like an airmet pops up along your route, we'll send you a notification and then you can see it on your device. And either look at it here or there's a notification section that will show you the, um, a depiction of your flight plan and then the, the uh, airmet. Here's an example of one that's come through on my phone. So you can see there, so there's a real-time weather notification. So it looked at, looked at a flight plan on one of my devices and then sent me a notification saying this air match just popped up. So you don't need to wait to hear, you know, the air of frequency that there's a new air met because you'll already know. Okay, text. That's where all the documentation lives. So things like AIP, AIP SUPS. You know, to view a particular document, tap on it with our finger, opens it up. We can look at a table of contents to quickly find bits in the document. And so on. Get the idea. We can search for text in a document. For example, finds any any occurrence of that particular text. We tap close when we finish looking at a document. When we haven't got a document, notice that we've now we've still got this search active. So it's going to search all the documents that we can see here for a particular term. So we'll search for Vasi again. So we should find some in here, some in aerodrome, and none in Enrope, for example. Go back, we've got all the AIP subs. These update again in almost real time. So once a day we check the Air Services website and then send you a notification if there's a new AIP sub. You'll notice that some AIP subs you know, are more general and some are for a specific airport. So for those that are for a particular airport, so here's one for Sydney, for example, we can look at it here, but we'll also see it on the terminal pane for that particular airport. So if we search for Sydney, 
y s s y for example scroll down the charts and we'll see any arp subs will be down the bottom of which there's a few for sydney and we can look at it just by tapping on it there we go back to text and the last really interesting thing would be down the bottom we've got the avplan efp documentation so we've got our quick start guide our user manual and some links to some online tutorials okay next down the bottom we have a notepad for writing notes and we can we can write pretty deep Detailed notes, and again, they'll synchronize across your devices in, in real time. You can see that I can't talk and write at the same time. You can change the color into what you want here, and you can erase, you can go backwards, or you can clear the whole thing. So yeah, that's our notepad. And then lastly, we have settings. The most important, well, oh, I think one of the most important settings is the data download section. We depict all the areas that you have access to as little boundaries on the map, these little squares. When these squares are green, that means you've saved all the data for that area for offline use, so you're good to go flying. Any areas that are not grey, that means they're not saved on your device. And so if you try and access those areas in flight, potentially you won't get anything. When an area is green, that means you're good to go. As you know, every three months, the ERSA and apps get updated and every six months, the charts get updated. What happens then is that you'll get a notification on your device saying that there's new data to be downloaded. And we'll also send you an email. What you do is open up AvPlan, there'll be a one on settings, there'll be a one on data downloads to try and prompt you to head to this part of the app. And then there's a button down here that says update. It's grayed out at the moment, but that'll turn red. You tap that button and it'll download data updates for all the regions that you've selected and then save it on your device so that when um, that cutover date comes around, it'll automatically switch over and use the new charts or the new ERSA or so on and you don't need to do anything. So green means good, any other colour. If it's orange, that means it's partially downloaded. If it's grey, that means it's not downloaded at all. Now we have a bunch of user settings. So this is where you pop in your username to connect the app to our website so your subscriptions can be activated and your uh, um, aircraft and flight plans can synchronise across. This is where you turn on automatic weather downloads, the warning system, so airspace warning, so as you fly up to airspace, we'll warn you that there's airspace ahead and if it's active or deactive or we don't know. Runway warning, so as you taxi around, we'll warn you as you'll taxi up to a runway or enter a runway. Train warning, similarly, if you're going to run into something, it will let you know. You can enable these notifications, not just being little things on the screen, but they can be, if you connect your headset up to your iPad, you can hear those notifications in your head, headphones. Printing options. Here's where we enable Avplan Live, so that's our live tracking feature. So with our plan lives, it will send us your location every five seconds so that we know where you are. And if you don't turn up at your destination, then when AMSA ring us and say, do you know where Joe Bloggs is, we can give them a, a reasonable idea. Additionally, with that enabled, we'll then send your location to other Avplan EFB users and they'll see it depicted on their, their EFB as well. Now have the option to have a full screen nav log, so instead of that little thing appearing on the side of the screen, you can have that full screen. 
This is where you enable the syncing of flight plans and aircraft details across your devices. So where you put in your name and NAPES details and so on. If you want to fly around the world, you can tick all these other boxes and then get the appropriate subscriptions and uh, fly around the world. If you only fly in Australia, just make sure you've only got Australia selected. It just cuts down the amount of data that we send you. And then there's a few other options. You can change the colours inside the app, so whatever you want to do. Next we have subscriptions. Shows you all the different subscription types. Whatever you do, don't press these buttons. Because when you press those buttons, 30% of that number goes to Apple and we get 70%. The best place to buy a subscription to Airplane EFB, if you're not a subscriber, is to go to our website at www.airplane-efb.com and get one there because it's 30% cheaper than the, the prices inside the app here because we're not paying Apple the tax. You can set up all the various settings for your aircraft in the aircraft type database. You can connect and configure external devices, so ADSB receivers. We pretty much support every ADSB receiver out there, bar two, being the Garmin GDL39 and the uh, one for the United States called Stratus. Uh, we support everything else, like um, yeah, dual, uh, eye level. Um, links, so on. You can connect it up. You can connect it up to an Av, Avid Iron IFD four forty five forty, and you can transfer GPS position, flight plans, and ADSB. Now, you can connect it to a Diamond Sky View and send and receive flight plan information to your Sky View, and also um, GPS location and AHARS for the synthetic vision, which I haven't shown you. Um, and then if you need help, you can tap on the contact center and we have a bunch of frequently asked questions and you can tap contact us to uh, get some assistance. So that is where you find everything. It takes a while to go through, but uh, you can go back and have a look. Now, I'll, I'll uh, demonstrate how you create and file a flight plan with Avplan, and then if we don't have any other questions, we can call it a day. So, we've got a flight plan here. To create a new one, we can tap stored plans here at the top right, top left, sorry, and we can choose to save or discard our changes. We go to an index of all our flight plans that we've saved on the device. And to create a new flight plan, we can say, tap on new flight plan in green. Automatically uses the last aircraft and call sign and so on and flight rules, BFR. And then we can create a plan just by tapping on the map. So we're gonna leave from Moravan, tap on the map near Moravan, tap on the blue plus to add it to our flight plan. There it is here, Moravan. And let's say we want to go to Latrobe Valley. Tap on the map near Latrobe Valley. Here it is here. Tap on the blue plus to add it to our flight plan. To insert a waypoint, we can just tap and hold on the, the red line. You see that blue ring appear around my finger? drag it where we want to go, let go, and say we want to overfly the Drew and ALA, tap on the blue plus. If we decide that we don't want to fly over Druin but we want to go over Turidan, we can tap and hold on Druin, you get the blue ring, drag it to Turidan, there's Turidan here, tap on the blue plus inserts and then our flight plan. It all updates in real time. If we want to just fly over a particular place, like let's fly over, we want to fly over this town here. There won't be an aviation waypoint there, so let's just create a user waypoint. So tap, hold, drag where we want to go. 
let go, and then we'll tap insert, and that inserts a user waypoint at that location. There we go. You know, we can also type waypoints in here. We can tap plus to just add them with, if we know the name or whatever. So there's multiple ways of skinning a cat. So once we're happy with the flight plan, you know, we, we've got altitudes in here. We can put them in. We can pop a departure time in here. 23.45. And then we go to planning and then we start at the top and work our way down. So we can find the most optimum altitude to fly based on aircraft performance and winds aloft. We'll fly it. 1500 seems a bit low, we'll fly at three and a half. Tap on that and it enters in our flight plan here. And if we want, we can just type in, in these cells here in the flight plan, we can type in whatever altitude we want. Tap planning to go back. We can load the aircraft with people and fuel. And we'll put 150 litres, for example, in there. It works out our takeoff weight, landing weight, zero fuel weight, and then fuel for climb, cruise, alternates, if we have one, variable fixed reserve, holding, so on, blah, blah, blah. Tap planning to go back. We can look at restricted areas, we can get a route briefing like we did before, or and then we can file a flight plan. So you pop in your NAPES details in here, remembers them forever. You can pop in a SAR time. Tap on the, the SAR time field and it automatically populates a SAR time based on an hour after your schedule arrival time. Or you can edit it if you want. Once we've filed a, a SAR time, the app will, will remember when it is. It'll place a calendar invite in our calendar reminding us to cancel it. And then we can file a flight plan, press submit, and away it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. And uh, oh, we're just in the process of redoing flight plan filing at the moment. So this is the, uh, the next release. Anyway, once we've filed a plan, we can delete it here, we can change our SAR time, and so on. So now we've filed a flight plan, we're ready to go flying. So we can signal to the app that we want to fly by placing it in fly mode. This has done a number of things. We've made the map a lot less responsive, so now it stops moving when I lift my finger rather than zooming around very interactively. It now stops. And the reason for that is that if we bump the iPad when we're in the cockpit, you know, the map just doesn't slide off to nowhere. We've now started the uh, track log recording. So um, it's now highlighting um, where we've been and drawing a little green line behind us. And it's also changed the way that the, the air... Um, the terrain and obstacle warnings work as well. So they now using GPS altitude to tell us about the ground around us and any obstacles rather than our flight plan altitude. Um, yeah, so we taxi around the airport, we take off. When we reach our departure point, we tap this departure button at the top of the screen. What that's going to do is log our departure time. And it's updated our planned ETA. So now we know um, what time will be at each en route out in each way point based on our time intervals in our flight plan and not our GPS ground speed. 
because we're probably still on climb, our GPS ground speeds will be very low. So this, if these were ETAs based on GPS only, they'll be very wrong. But they're not, they're based on these time intervals. And then we're in cruising, when we're in cruising flight, we'll see our ground speed here and our ETA and ETI based on the GPS. So this and the time here gives us our plan versus actual view of our flight progress. You can see we've got our, our active leg is magenta and the legs in the future are red. When we fly past Turidan, it will automatically sequence to the next leg. So our old legs are in blue, current leg is magenta and the future legs are red. So it will automatically sequence till we get to our destination. We land, we pop the app back into plan mode, it stops the track log recording, it's changed the way that the obstacle and terrain warnings work and the map's now interactive so you know I can flick it around really well, really quickly and easily. You know, here's an example, here's our runway centre line. So even before him we knew that the, the active runway at Turidan would probably be 2-1, we can plan our approach and so on. You know, we can even, which I forgot to show you, we can even edit the map so we can actually draw on the map itself so we can even you know draw in where we expect our circuit to go on the map itself so just like just like the old paper charts we can draw on it with you know you can use a pencil or you can, an apple pencil or whatever or a stylus or your finger to draw so really neat so yes that's uh Airplan EFB in a nutshell or a fire hose. We do have a session next week that's uh, an advanced session, so we go much more deeper into the flight planning aspects of our plan uh, for VFR and IFR. So this gives you a, this, the, the objective today was to go through the app and show you where to find information um, and then how to use it to do some basic flight planning. And then uh, yeah, next week we have a, a deep dive into certain areas. If you've got any questions, feel free to type them in and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, as you can see, there's, you know, there's a lot of work that's gone into this. You know, our, our development team, you know, we're actively developing this product. Um, some of the things that are coming out very soon are a completely revised flight planning form. So here it is here. Um, this will be out in the next few weeks. So at the moment, you know, when you're, when you're preparing a flight plan, some of the information is a bit all over the place, like the aircraft details are in the aircraft models and so on. This centralises it all in one place, so you can quickly change things. But it does it, it reflects it all back into the flight plan. So when we change to IFR, for example, you know, not only we change the flight rules, but we've changed it in here, you know. Um, We've got departure thing, we've got departure time, so we can just tap on here to, to change it. We can do it in local time as well. So you get the idea. Um, your flight plan route, initial altitude, you know, remarks, that kind of stuff. You know, you can put delays in here. So we're going to, Y, T, D, N, we're going to do aerial work for uh, you know, 15 minutes, and it not only it's it updated our flight plan that we're going to file, but it's also updated our nav log here. So with the extra 15 minutes and updated our en route times and so on. Destinations we can add alternates with this new form. Uh, y B N S, for example, Bensdale. So it's automatically pop Bensdale at the bottom of our flight plan as an alternate and so on. But the only problem is about an hour ago it started doing that. So I can't actually show you file a flight plan, but it will, but it will. So yes. Um, and then we've got a few other things like weather cameras as an overlay coming. Um, we're going to completely revitalise this index of flight plans so you can organise flight plans into folders and so on and sort them and, you know, some other good stuff. Yes. So, um, yeah, there's been no other questions. So thank you very much for attending on this Saturday morning. Um, 
And uh, yeah, hopefully you've got something out of it. If you've got any feedback about Avplan or the webinar or whatever, feel free to contact us at support at avplan-efb.com. And we also have a support phone number, so you can ring us on 03 8370 That's our number in um, Melbourne. So that's sort of Melbourne office hours. Uh, we also have an office in Denver, Colorado. That's where I am currently. And uh, so you can pretty much reach us almost, you know, all day, every day based on that. Um, you know, as we expand our operations in the US here and in Europe and other places, um, yeah, you know, our, our global reach is spreading quite far um, and we can't do it without the support of all of you. So thank you very much for being subscribers if you are and if you're not, I hope what you've seen is impressed and we can have you aboard soon because we have so many more plans that we want to do with this product. Um, and uh, we can't do it without the support of, of all of you. So thank you very much for uh, your time and let us know if we can assist in any way. Otherwise, safe flying and uh, we'll see you online maybe next week. Thank you very much.